The Beetle and the Tree Frog. Clay was alone and far from the soil that he so loved and admired, and to make matters worse, night was coming on fast. A twinge of anxiety crept down his back. It doesn't matter, he told himself. I'm fine on my own. He had only looked away for a moment. And then pollen and raindrop were gone. Perhaps they had fallen to their deaths. No, 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 he said. Ants are such resilient creatures. I'm sure they won't even get a scratch. It was almost dark, and everything below him was shrouded in black. The only reasonable direction to go now, it seemed to him, was up. He had never been above the forest canopy before. Perhaps the stars were even more stunning without an army of plants to block out their light. With thoughts of this heavenly beauty in mind, he began the last part of his climb. A monkey howled in the distance, and a bird screeched. The sudden clamour frightened little Clay. He hummed a small ditty in order to calm his frayed nerves. "This is how good beetles," he said aloud. End up in bad places. Clay climbed for a very long time. Eventually, the moon and stars began to shine, and his path became clearer. As he neared the top of the tree, he suddenly felt very sad and missed a great many things. Why should this be? He pondered. I'm about to burst through the roof of the world. It must truly be a wondrous sight. Yet all I can think about is my mother. With his last huffs and grunts, Clay reached the top of the K-pop tree. After he'd caught his breath, he stood as tall as he possibly could to see what he could see. Who would have imagined a world so large? Moonlight slipped across the leaves of the tree. A thousand stars, perhaps even more, shimmered in the sky, as clear as silver pebbles in a flowing stream. This is a good place," he said, somewhat aghast. "But still, my heart is so very heavy." Clay stood there for a time and listened to the sounds of the rainforest. Night birds called out to one another, and always seemed to wait patiently for a reply. A bat's wings pattered against its own skin as it flickered across the sky. The trees, too numerous to count, swayed gently to and fro, encouraged by a warm and tender breeze. He knew this night would eventually end. And that he would be able to climb back down with the heat of the sun upon his shell. Once he reached the ground, he would be reunited with his friends. This understanding gave him some comfort, but still he had to pass the darkest parts of the night all by himself. Clay wanted to remove these lonesome thoughts from his mind, and so, with that goal in mind. He fixed his eyes on the most distant tree he could find and began to sing. He sang for all the forest to hear from the very bottom of his heart, and for a time he was happy again. A light drizzle fell during the night. Clay closed his eyes and dozed off for a time. When he opened them again, the first rays of the morning sun had broken through the wispy clouds. The little beetle stretched out his limbs and the muscles beneath his shell, and then began to climb down. He was startled by how easy the journey down was compared to the one coming up. Well, he told himself, down is always easier than up. Still, he had to climb for a very, very long time in order to reach the bottom. When at last he stood upon solid earth. He laughed out loud. He was relieved because the day was still young, but he was also sad. No one was waiting for him at the base of the tree. 
My friends have forgotten me completely. Clay had never been alone in the forest before. A small part of him thought that was very exciting. Without his family there, or any pushy ants to boss him around, he could do as he pleased. That was a very liberating feeling. The only problem now was figuring out what he should do. A few butterflies drifted overhead. The morning dew, along with the leftover rain, dripped down from the leaves and the trees. Clay decided he would go for a stroll. He walked along with his head raised, taking in the plants above him. The forest was so much more than just the soil beneath his feet, and he was glad that he knew that. Perhaps he would come back some day and climb that incredible tree again. Up here! A creature called down to him, interrupting his reflections. Up where? Clay asked, glancing at a red leaf. Oh, I see you there. You're hard to miss. I am here to be seen, the red-eyed tree frog said. Would you like to join me on this fine leaf for a bit of a chat? Why not? Little Clay grabbed the tip of the leaf, pulled himself up and toddled toward the centre where the tree frog was perched. Do you know me, little beetle? asked the frog. I know you. But do you know you? Yes, Clay said. My name is Little Clay and you're the guru. If you say so. I say so. You seem very confident. I like that in a beetle. An ant was looking for you yesterday. What ant? Raindrop. She tried very hard. The guru yawned and licked his lips with his long tongue. Ants named Raindrop are always trying to find me. That hardly seems possible. Hardly, the frog smiled. And yet it is. Clay stepped closer to the frog. She was extremely disappointed. We just missed you, I think. Ants named Raindrop are going to have to get used to disappointments. Clay laughed and the guru smiled. Why are you here? the tree frog asked. You asked me to join you. No, why are you here? In the forest. To find my purpose. Ah, determined and clever. I like that in a beetle very much. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? Sadly, no. Your purpose is your own, and not for me to tell. That's something you'll have to discover by yourself. Yet perhaps I can nudge you onto the right path, if you're willing. It would be a lot simpler if you just told me. True, but that's not how it works. Of course, Clay said. Nothing is ever easy in the jungle. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Go to the river. The beetle sat there and gazed into the frog's eyes, waiting for more. But more never came. Is that it? Clay said at last. Yes. Go to the river? Yes. When? Right now, the guru said. You really shouldn't delay. What will I find there? An ant. I'm sick of leaf cutters, little Clay groaned. They left me behind in the forest. I'm not happy with them at all. Who said anything about a leaf cutter ant? And strictly speaking, this ant isn't even in the rainforest. A riddle? Clay asked, growing excited. I like riddles. Go to the river. There you will meet an ant. Take this poor creature back to the colony. And then what? That's for you to decide. 
that's my purpose. For today, yes. What if I say no? Too many questions, the guru lamented. Do as I say. Go to the river now. Clay was about to ask him exactly where he should go, for the river was very large. Before he had a chance to voice his question, the guru licked his lips one last time and scampered off into the trees. <laughs> Left behind again, Clay muttered. He had half a mind to ignore the frog's advice, but in the end, he made his way to the river bank. Curiosity got the better of him. The young beetle walked along the shore and watched the river flow by. He sang a song to himself and his spirits lightened. Sunlight slipped through the clouds and the forest stirred with the buzzing of insects and bird calls. Waves washed up against the mud and the rocks, dampening the earth. It's going to be a beautiful day, little Clay said. <laughs>